Hi, hello. Welcome to this video lecture series on mechanics of materials. So in today's class, I'll be discussing some numericals on cantilever beam subjected to different types of loads. So to start with, let us consider a cantilever beam carrying uniformly distributed load along with point loads as shown in figure. So for this, I have to draw shear force as well as bending moment diagrams. So the major difference between the cantilever and simply supported beam is that in case of simply supported beam, we have to find out support reactions. Whereas here we can directly draw that shear force diagram. So for drawing shear force diagram, we, no, we need not find out any support reactions in case of cantilever beam. So to draw that shear force diagram, let us first consider that shear force diagram. So here I have that line diagram. So at point B, I'll consider a section after the loads and before support. After the loads in the sense, from right to left, after 15 kilonewton, almost close to that fixed end A, I'll be considering a section. So now that sign convention is very important. Now to the right, so that at point B, I have right downward. So right downward is considered as positive because left upward is positive, left downward is negative, and the right upward is negative, right downward is positive. So taking that reference line, okay, we have to draw a reference line from there upwards 20 kilonewton up. So proportionate sketch we can draw. So 20 kilonewton upwards, it is marked. So then up to 10 kilonewton, that is up to point D, there is no other load acting, therefore it is constant. Then again at D, we have downward force of 10 kilonewton. So that is right downward is positive. Therefore, from that 20, it adds another 10. Therefore, at point D, it will go up by another 10. So totally that is 30 kilonewton at point D. Now, after that uh, 10 kilonewton up to point C, we have uniformly distributed load. As the name itself indicates, and it is given that it is 12 kilonewton per meter. So with the distance that load varies. So at that point D, so the distance at point D it is zero. Therefore, even that load is zero because of that uniformly distributed load. But at point C, it increases with the distance for two meters, it is 12 into 24. So that means at point D from 30, it adds another 24. So at point C, it will be totally 54. Then again, at point C, we have point load and that is right downward. Right downward is positive. So to that 54, okay, 15 gets added up and it will be another 15. That is 54 plus 15, that is 19. So up to point A, there is no other load. Therefore, at point A, total force, shear force is 65 kilonewton. Now I have to draw that bending moment diagram. So what we have drawn till now is nothing but shear force diagram. So now to draw that bending moment diagram, I have to find out bending moments at different points. So end moments that is at point B, bending moment is zero. So then at point D, again, we have to consider that bending moment sign convention at point D that 20 kilonewton causes right clockwise. So right clockwise is fast, negative because left clockwise is positive. Therefore, right clockwise is negative. That is 20 to one, 20 kilonewton meter. So that is with reference to that reference line drawn below that point in that line, vertical line, below that reference line, 20 kilonewton meter has to be taken. So then again, from point C, we have to find out bending moment. To find out bending moment at point C, again, close to that A section is considered. And about point C, the bending moment, MC is equal to, so right clockwise, right clockwise is negative. That is minus 20 into three. Minus 20 into 3 is 6, minus 10 into 2, that is also right clockwise, minus 20, minus 
60 minus 20, that is minus 80. In addition to that, I have an uniformly distributed load of 12 kilonewton per meter, that is minus 12 into 2. That is the total load. It will be concentrated at the center as point load. Therefore, the 12 into 2 into 1, 24. So totally, that comes to 104 kilonewton meter. So at point C, that is minus 104 kilonewton meter. So that calculations have been shown there. So now, if we join that, so from point D to point C, it is uniformly distributed load. Therefore, we have to represent that by a parabolic curve. So we have to join that uniformly distributed load by a curve in case of bending moment diagram. So now bending moment at A. So to find out bending moment at A, again, with reference to that section, right clockwise is negative. That is minus 20 into four, minus 20 into four, minus 10 into three, minus 12 into two into two, minus 15 into one. So if you add all put together, it will be minus 173 kilonewton meter. So that at point A, it is minus 173 kilonewton meter. So that's again with reference to that reference line below, we have to mark that 173. Now we have to join all these points. Wherever it is point load, those are joined by lines. And wherever it is uniformly distributed load, we have to join by parabolic curve. So it is a quadratic, therefore it is a parabolic curve. So, so this is the shear force and bending moment diagrams that has been shown there. Next, so for this problem, in this a cantilever beam with UDL, Okay, as well as point loads are shown, we have to draw that shear force and bending moment diagram. So to draw this, if you look at that uh, figure given, load diagram given, we have point load, we have uniformly distributed load, and in addition, we have a couple of 20 kilonewton meter at point D. So now to draw that shear force bending moment diagram, so as I've already told you, for drawing shear force, we don't have to find out any support reactions. Directly, we can draw that shear force diagram. So one important thing is that couple is nothing but acts as a moment. Therefore, there is no, uh, what is that term, contribution of that in drawing shear force diagram. So while drawing shear force diagram, we should not consider that couple. So neglecting that couple, we have to draw shear force diagram. But while drawing bending moment diagram, we have to take that into account. So to draw that shear force diagram, now if you look at this, so at point F, there is no load, therefore there won't be any shear force at that point. Now again, close to that support A, I have considered a section, so right downward, that is 50 kilo, 15 kilo Newton at point E is right downward. So right downward is positive, with reference to that reference line, what I have taken 15 kilonewton upward, we have to take. So then it is constant up to next load. So that is up to point C, there is no other shear force because even though that couple is there, that contribution will not be there for that shear force. Therefore, we have to draw horizontal up to point C. Now at point C to point B, we have uniformly distributed load of 20 kilonewton per meter. So that means at point C, the contribution of that UDL is zero. And when it comes to point B, it is 20 into 0.5, that is 10 kilonewton. So when it comes to point B, again, that is right downward is positive. So I have to add another 10 kilonewton to already existing 15 at C. So at C, because of uniformly distributed load, the contribution is zero, but at point B, 10 kilonewton gets added up. So therefore, it must be joined by a linear line. So from 15 to 25, we have to join by a linear line. 
then from point to b to a there is no other load therefore it is just a horizontal line so that is the shear force diagram for the given configuration or for the given cantilever with different types of loads that is uniformly distributed load uh, that point load and also couple now to draw the bending moment diagram so at each and every point actually all that a b c d e f whatever we mark those are the salient points wherever that load is there or wherever that supports or a change of cross sections are there we'll consider that as salient point so now at point f it says end moment so at point f it is moment is zero then again with reference to that reference line considered okay and that section plane is considered very close to uh, fixed end a after the loads and before support that is very close to a so that bending moment at f it is zero when it comes to bending moment at e there also it is zero because no load is acting to the right of that one to cause any moment even the resultant effect of that left side moments will be equal to zero anyways we are not calculating that so even bending moment at e it is zero when it comes to point d so because of that 15 kilo newton so that causes bending moment that is right clockwise right clockwise is right clockwise is negative that is minus 15 into 0.5 that is contribution because of that point load so at point d bending moment is minus 7.5 so below that reference line at point d we have to mark that 7.5 kilo newton meter as shown then again at the same point d we have moment but it is a couple so that is again right clockwise right clockwise is negative we have magnitude equal to 20 kilo newton meter so therefore again right downward is negative it will come down by 20 so total it will be 27.5 now at up to point c up to point c we don't have uh, we have to find out moment at point c for calculating that one again right clockwise minus 15 into 1 minus 15 and this couple has to be added to that minus 20 because that is also right clockwise so minus 15 minus 20 that is minus 35 at point c total moment because of that forces or the couple that is we have considered total moment will be the minus 35 kilo newton meter at point c so again with reference to that reference line considered below that at point c we have to mark at it is to the scale or proportionate sketch we can mark that is 35 kilo newton meter we have to mark then bending moment at b so to find out that bending moment at b again we have to consider all that moments clockwise and counter clockwise moments acting to the right of b so again section is considered very close to fixed end a so that 15 kilo newton causes right clockwise so right clockwise is negative so that is minus 15 into 1.5 minus 15 into 1.5 again we have minus 20 that is also clockwise moment so total minus 35 in addition to that we have to consider moment due to that 20 kilo newton per meter that is udl that is minus 20 into 0.5 into minus 20 into 0.5 into uh, 0.25 because that distance is 0.25 and that should be take udl must be converted into point load and the distance will it will be acting at the center distance will be 0.25 if we calculate bending moment will be minus 45 kilo newton meter so now we have to find out bending moment at point a so there again all that are acting to the right of that section so minus again right clockwise is negative moment so minus 15 into minus 15 into 2 minus 20 because it is a couple no need of considering distance there therefore minus 15 into 2 minus 20 Minus 20 into 0.5. Minus 20 into 0.5 because it is point load. Uh, sorry, it is uniformly distributed load. 
So 20 into 0.5 will act as a point load at the center into that distance from that midpoint up to that point A, it is 0.75. So if we add all those things, you will get moment equal to minus 57.5. So that is what is marked. So here all that what we have marked is negative bending moment. Here once again, we should, so after marking all the point, we should remember that all that point loads must be joined by lines that has uniformly distributed load must be a parabolic curve in case of uniformly distributed load. Other two in case of bending moment for, bend, for uniformly distributed load, bending moment will be a parabolic curve. So this is again another problem. Here also we have combination of point loads, uniformly distributed load and couple. As I've already told you clearly, no need of finding out any support reactions here. Directly we can draw that shear force diagram for the given configuration or for the given beam with the different types of loads. So now without considering, without considering or without finding, we don't have to find out any support reactions to draw that shear force diagram. So to start with, again, very close to A, that is after the loads and before fixed end A, I'll assume a section and here I'll start from the extreme right. At the point again, we have to mark the salient points. It's up to us, I have marked A, B, C, D. At point D, I have a couple of 40 kilo Newton meter. While drawing shear force diagram, we need not consider that couple. So then at point C, at point C, the bending moment is because of, bending moment is because of that couple as well as that uniformly distributed load of 20 kilo Newton meter over that length, two meters. So if we want to find out that bending moment there, we have to consider that. And here, in case of shear force diagram, it is the only load that is uniformly distributed load for that two meters length we have to consider that is 20 kilo Newton per meter. For two meters, it is 40 kilo Newton. So that means at point D, no uniformly distributed load is zero and it varies with the distance. So that is at point C, it is 40 kilo Newton meter, 40 kilo Newton. Now at point C, in addition to that uh, UDL, we also have a point load of 10 kilo Newton that is right downward that also gets added up to that 40. Therefore, it will be totally 50 kilo Newton. Now, from point C to point B, point C to point B, we have uniformly distributed load. That contribution of that uniformly distributed load at point C, it is zero. And at point B, that is nothing but 20 into 120. It adds to that already existing 50. Because of UDL, at point C, contribution is zero. Whereas earlier, because of the combined effect of that UDL and point load at C, and the UDL that is acting to the right, the total we have 50. So taking that as 50 as a reference, it increases by 20 up to point B. Because UDL is 20, 20 into 1, 20 kilo Newton, it gets added up to 50. So we have to join by linear line. Again, at point B, we have a point load of 30 kilo Newton. That is again right downward. That is right downward is positive. So 70 plus 30, 100. It goes up by 30. So then at point A, at point A, we have uniformly distributed load from B to A. From B to A, we have uniformly distributed load of 20 kilo Newton per meter. So for two meters, we'll get 40 kilo Newton. So that means so the starting of UDL, that is contribution due to UDL at point B is zero, but at point A, it increases by 40. Already at point B, 
because of that force was acting at b at the rate of b we have totally 100 and it starts from 100 and it increases to 140 because there is a contribution of 40 kilo newton over that 2 meters length because of that udl of 20 kilo newton per meter therefore total load the yeah, shear force or load acting at a is 140 kilo newton so that we can join by lines all that points if we join by line we will get this shear force diagram as shown in figure now to draw that bending moment diagram as usual we have to consider reference line so we can find out that shear force at different points so like this so shear force bend shear bend sorry the bending moments we can find out bending moment at d usually end moments are zero but we have a couple of 40 kilo newton meter so that should be considered as a moment therefore since it is right clockwise it is taken as minus 40 kilo newton meter then again at point c we have to consider that couple as well as udl between c and d so again that udl is causes right clockwise that is minus 40 because of that couple minus that udl is 20 minus 20 into 2 into 1 because uniformly distributed load when it is 20 kilo newton per meter for 2 meters it is 20 into 2 that will that should be converted into point load and 20 into 2 that will be acting at the center therefore into 1 therefore minus 40 minus 20 into 2 into 1 so that is minus 80 kilo newton meter at point c so now we have to find out bending moment at b so to find out bending moment at b we have to consider that couple acting at d we have to consider udl acting over that entire 3 meters length between b and d and also we have to consider moment because of that 10 kilo newton that means total bending moment at b can be found out by taking minus 40 again right clockwise is uh, uh, negative minus 40 minus that udl will be minus 20 into 3 and it will be acting at the center as point load into 1.5 minus 20 into 3 60 into 1.5 that is minus 90 minus 90 minus 40 is minus 130 in addition to that we have right clockwise moment because of 10 kilo newton that is minus 10 into 1 that is minus minus 10 kilo newton meter so if we add all that so what is that we will get minus 40 minus that uh, 20 into 3 20 into 3 60 60 into 1.5 90 plus 40 is 90 plus 40 is 130 plus 10 140 minus 140 at point b on similar lines we have to find out bending moment at a bending moment at a again everything causes right clockwise minus 40 minus that udl is 20 into total length is 5 into 2.5 minus 10 into 3 because of point load that is acting to the right of that section considered again we also have that minus 30 into 2 that is also point load acting to the right of that one which causes moment about point a in addition to that we have udl of udl of 20 kilo newton okay so that already we have taken 20 into 5, 5 into 2.5 we have taken 10 into 3 we have taken point load couple minus 40 we have taken then point load also causes moment that is minus 30 into 2 so total if we take it is minus 380 kilo newton meter now we have to mark all those points in bending moment diagram so as all of them are negative below that reference line we have to mark so now by joining those if those are point loads we can join by lines but throughout we have uniformly distributed load therefore except at point d point d usually end moment zeros 
but here we have a couple of 40 from that 40 point okay we have to join everything by curves only parabolic curves so this is what is shuffles and bending moment diagram for some of the cantilever beams with different types of loads of course i have not considered uniformly varying load so if you have uniformly varying load that procedure will not change finding out bending moment and finding out shear force almost similar so that i'll take up in that simply supported beam in there there i'll consider that triangular load as well and i explain how to draw that shear force and bending moment diagrams when you have triangular load so now i'll consider different standard cases of drawing shear force and bending moment diagrams so to start with let us consider a simply supported beam with a point or central point load central load or point load that is nothing but point load at the center now if we consider supports so we can name that by anything okay so end supports and the load is acting at the center and total distance is l so that load will be at a distance of l by 2 from either end so now as the loading is symmetric no need of uh, taking moments and all those things that load will be shared by two supports equally therefore at each end the load supported is nothing but w by w by 2 so again after the load very close to that right support i consider section therefore that left upward at a like extreme left that w by 2 is positive because left upward is positive up to that midpoint there is no other load therefore it is joined by a line straight line and at point that midpoint we have load of w so that is again left downward is negative left downward is negative means it will go down by w so w by 2 up to reference line another w by 2 will come down now from that point there is no other load up to support at the right hand extreme right hand therefore it is a you have to join that by line so half of that will be positive half will be negative so that is what is marked that is nothing but shear force diagram for a simply supported beam with point load at the center now if i had to draw that bending moment diagram we know that end moments are zeros so if we consider extreme left load is nothing but w by 2 perpendicular distance is zero therefore moment at that point is zero even at the right extreme right also load is w by 2 distance is zero there are also moment zero so then we will have moment at the center the point where the load is acting so you can consider either w by 2 left side or right side so since i have considered considered section very close to that right hand support so left upward left that w by 2 on the left side causes clockwise moment about that midpoint that is left clockwise is positive therefore bending moment at that midpoint is w by 2 into l by 2 that is w l by 4 so that is what is marked since it is left clockwise it is positive therefore if we join that end points to that moment obtained at the center you will get a shape like that and since it is above that reference line it is a positive it is positive bending moment diagram next let us consider simply supported beam with a point load at distances a and b from the support or it can be l1 l2 we can also call it as eccentric loading load will not be acting at the center so load will be acting at certain distance from the support but not exactly at the center in such cases we have to make use of that we have to find out support reactions unlike when that uh, the load is at the center and we have two simple supports directly we can take that equal distribution whereas here we cannot take like that now take moments about b or take moments about a anything we can do so now i have taken moments about a 
so while taking moments that is while finding out support reactions no need of considering any bending moment sign convention but if we take clockwise positive we have to take counter clockwise negative if we take counter clockwise positive clockwise negative that we have to remember why finding out support reactions that means sum of all the vertical forces is equal to zero that is second condition so first if i consider taking moments about a so rb rb into that length because moment is nothing but load into perpendicular distance here load or force is nothing but rb support reaction into that length l rb into l so here counter clockwise is taken as positive then what is the moment we get we, we get moment because of w so that w causes clockwise moment about point a therefore it is minus w into a therefore rb into l minus w a is equal to 0 with that i'll get rb is equal to w a by l so now another equilibrium static equilibrium condition i can use that is sum of the upward forces is equal to sum of the downward force or loads so now here upward forces are nothing but r a plus r b is equal to that w so now i know the value of r b by substituting i'll get r a is equal to w b by l now i know forces at different points that is salient points i can take as a b c ends at mark as a and b and at the point of application of load i have taken that point as c now to draw that shear force diagram let me consider a section after the load w and very close to support b then left upward r a is positive that is nothing but w b by l so to some proportionate length mark that w b by l and up to w there is no other load it is constant now since we do not know the value at b so at b that is r b so that is right upward right upward is negative how much is that that we know that is w a by l so below that reference line let us mark that w a by l proportionate sketch then up to point c there is no other load from point b join draw a line horizontal line then at the word at the center we can draw that previously ended line and this line by a vertical line so that gives w so that is nothing but shear force diagram for that given beam now above is positive below is negative now to draw the bending moment diagram at ends it is zero end moments at point a and b it is zero at point c at point c either we can take r a into a or r b into b both are correct only so since i have considered section very close to support b r a left clockwise positive r a into a r a is nothing but w b by l so into a that is w a b by l so at point c in bending moment diagram let me take some proportionate length and mark that as w a b by l at point a and b moments are zeros so then by joining these points i'll get the bending moment diagram as shown in figure this is the shear force and bending moment diagram for a simply supported beam with distances of a and b from the supports on either end so i told you that a and b can also be taken as l1 and l2 so now one more standard case is simply supported beam with uniformly distributed load so that uniformly distributed load is usually considered as some w newton per meter here if we consider two supports for uniformly distributed load or length l then again we have to find out support reactions as that load is equally distributed over the two supports we can also take it as w into l is the total load so since it is supported by two supports we can take it as wl by 2 at supports both that left hand support and right hand support so now drawing shear force diagram directly we can draw that is again considering a section very close to that right hand support okay left upward is positive that is ra wl by 
I can take upward and since WL by 2 I am marked and because of uniformly distributed load at left extreme left it starts from 0 and ends at WL by 2 with a negative sign at the at other end. So now since that uh, left hand support it is upward at right hand support it is minus WL by 2 as shown in the calculation. Those two we have to join by linear line as shown in figure. For uniformly distributed load, we know that here force diagram is a linear line. Now to draw the bending moment diagram, so end moments are zeros. At two supports, it is zero. Now I have to find out bending moment at the midpoint. So I'll consider because that uniformly distributed load will be concentrated at center as point load. So there the bending moment will be maximum. So to find out that bending moment, and one more point also we can make note, the point where shear force is zero in shear force diagram is the point of maximum bending moment. In this case, it is at L by two. So the point where shear force is zero in shear force diagram, that is the point of maximum bending moment. So now to find out that bending moment at that point, midpoint, so end moments are zero. So bending moment at the midpoint is given by M is equal to that, whatever that is WL by two into L by two, WL by two into L by two, that is left clockwise, left clockwise is positive, minus, minus UDL over that, half of the length is there, minus WL by two, into L by 2, WL by 2 into L by 2 is nothing but, uh, sorry, minus W into L by 2, because W Newton per meter, for L by 2 meters total load because of UDL is W into L by 2. That will be acting as point load at the center. So to that half length, the center will be at L by 4, therefore into L by 4. So if you simplify bending moment, you will get my WL square by A. I repeat, so bending moment at the center, as I told you, the point where shear force is zero in case of shear force diagram, that is the point of maximum bending moment. So by looking at that shear force diagram, we can easily make out that, that the bending moment is maximum at the center. So end moments are zero. To find out that bending moment at the center, that RA, that is left clockwise, so left support, that WL by 2 into L by 2, that is left clockwise is positive, that is WL by 2 into L by 2, minus, we have to take left downward negative, that is UDL, or a length of W by, uh, that is W over the length of L by 2. So W into L by 2 will be the total load, it will be acting as point load at the center, therefore into L by 4. So if you simplify, we'll get WL square by A. So these final bending moments in case of simply supported load with point load at the center, with uh, simple supports, with load not acting at the center at certain distances from the support and uh, simply supported beam with UDL, we have to remember standard bending moment relations because the same thing we use in case of bending stress, numericals, and at other places, it is better to remember. Even otherwise, we can find out that's not a big deal. But still, it is better to remember these maximum bending moments for standard cases. So now today I have discussed some of the uh, numericals on cantilever beams subjected to different types of loads. And also, I have explained how to obtain shear force and bending moment diagrams for standard cases. So in next class, I'll be continuing with some numericals on simply supported beam with different types of loads. Thank you.